This video is intended for educational and training purpose of eye surgeons. Viewer discretion is advised, not recommended for children. Hello friends, I am Dr. Saurabh Patwardhan from Nandadeep Eye Hospital and PG Training Institute. And in this video, I will be speaking about a new sign of posterior capsular rupture. I call it posterior late sign. This sign and recognition of this sign early during the intraoperative course will help my colleagues in managing the posterior capsular rupture better. So this is a cataract. I thought it is a dense posterior subcapsular cataract, 50 year old male. And I didn't think earlier that it was a posterior polar cataract. But as we go on, we'll see how it behaves. So I started off surgery on topical anesthesia as usual and completion of the CCC using the 26 gauge cystitome and here is the hydro dissection and I could observe the fluid wave passing across there was some kind of disturbance around that uh, posterior opacity but I never thought it was something unusual again filled the antechamber with OVD HPMC 2% and now I started with FACO. As I started doing FACO emulsification, the initial stage, when I started removing the anterior cortical material, I could feel or I could sense some kind of strange behavior. There was slightly deeper anterior chamber on the left side, which I felt, but I thought uh, it may be normal. And I started off. Uh, trying to do chop and I could feel that there was no support from the back and in fact the nucleus appeared to be deeper than what I started off with. I still thought it might be just loose zonules or maybe sclera is little more elastic that's why it's happening and then I realized there was a additional membrane you can see now it started coming from the left top angle you can see this I call it posterior ledge so once it started coming I definitely thought that something is unusual we never see this kind of membrane so something was not good and whenever as a surgeon and with experience you know that if something you feel is off there is definitely some issue so this was the probable explanation for this posterior ledge what I call there was a posterior capsular dehiscence nucleus tilted little bit and the posterior cortex or the capsule basically came into the anterior part of the nucleus and it looked like a posterior ledge or there was a ledge overhanging over the nucleus I call it posterior ledge sign and this indicates that there is a posterior capsular dehiscence with the nucleus now tilting over the anterior hyoid and uh, there is a nucleus drop possible now and now I could feel that nucleus was going on one side here so definitely there is a posterior capsular dehiscence there so I inflated the anterior chamber again with the OVD while I removed the FACO probe. Now, the important step next is to convert it into small incision cataract surgery. So we have to make a scleral tunnel and remove it. So first thing is to anesthetize the patient further. So I gave subconjunctal anesthesia followed by posterior subtenon anesthesia with 2% xylocaine. Wait for 2 minutes and patient is now absolutely comfortable. Important tips for making the scleral tunnel avoid hypotony. Take time, there is no hurry, avoid area of the initial incision and make a large tunnel. We don't want any resistance from the scleral tunnel when we remove the nucleus in these cases because we don't want the nucleus to drop back into the vitreous. So take your time. I generally avoid cautery but you can do minimal cautery to avoid bleeding. I ask my assistant generally to wash over the tunnel so that I can see and this is the entry using the keratome here and I have created a tunnel of more than 6.5 millimeter now I am going to use the ball tipped chopper I want to 
prolapse this nucleus in the anterior chamber uh, so you can use any long uh, blunt chopper and uh, once the one pole is tilted you have to make sure that uh, never to push the nucleus down avoid pushing OVD over the nucleus hook under the nucleus and push OVD from the deeper most part of the nucleus so these are important tips you have to follow otherwise you may drop the nucleus into vitreous so now just watch I am trying to use Sinsky to hook the nucleus up and uh, there you can see it is trying to go into the vitreous now so I tried to pull it up using the Sinsky hook but uh, the nucleus is already divided into half due to chopping now watch how I use my OVD I take that uh, OVD cannula under the nucleus to the deeper most part and then I push the viscoelastic the common mistake done by ophthalmologist is uh, pushing the OVD over the nucleus and that kind of pushes the nucleus back into vitreous so never push OVD over the nucleus always go underneath go to the deeper most part or the most distal part of the nucleus and push OVD from there so now half of the nucleus is out and now I am pushing OVD under the second half and as you can see I am trying to push more HPMC underneath the nucleus the scleral tunnel is good large enough so that I could easily do visco expression and uh, I could take out all of the nucleus without any drop particle some important tips always use diluted triamcelorone 50% diluted to check the vitreous use bottle height of 60 to 70 centimeters cut rate should be highest vacuum should be around 150 to 200 and always maintain the anterior chamber during vitrectomy this helps in maintaining good corneal clarity later and also avoids vitreous prolapse further so I am using the previous incision here and the mistake now I am doing is that my fluid flow from my left hand is going into the or over the anterior hyaloid thus causing disruption of the posterior capsule further now I directed it away from it now uh, my hand was getting basically stuck because of the patient's nose this was a nasal incision so I decided I will go from the scleral tunnel now while doing that you can see that I am always tenting up the scleral incision so as to avoid any prolapse of the anterior chamber and I am now clearing vitreous strands from the anterior chamber once they are clear I shift to IA cut mode that means the aspiration comes first now and you can toggle in between cut IA and IA cut mode whenever you feel there is a vitreous strand you can toggle to cut mode and you can release those vitreous strands so that you don't create any traction over the vitreous and uh, thus you can clear the vitreous as well as cortex simultaneously using the vitrectomy probe uh, when you aspirate the cortex make sure you aspirate completely in the anterior chamber without starting the cut mode otherwise sometimes a part of the cortex might just go down if you start cutting prematurely and that may release the cortex and just uh, it might go into the vitreous so make sure that once you aspirate the cortex you aspirate it completely you can change the hands you can use uh, the side port incision for taking out the cortex don't hurry into anything just make sure that anterior chamber is always maintained you can reduce the vacuum if the anterior chamber is collapsing a bit and now the sub incisional cortex also has been aspirated so I have cleaned the bag as well you can see that there is no cortex left anterior chamber is very clean no vitreous and now I am going to place a three piece IOL you can use non foldable or foldable IOL but three piece IOL is must do not attempt to put a single piece IOL in the sulcus it might create issues in the long run for the patient and now first haptic goes into the sulcus you can see the haptic going very close to the iris into the sulcus and then you rotate the second haptic as well into the sulcus so both the haptics are in the sulcus now and I am doing just passive visco wash from the anterior chamber you can also use irrigation aspiration but generally it deepens the anterior chamber and hydrates more vitreous so I generally use just passive visco wash the scleral tunnel is good but still I prefer to suture it to avoid any post-operative hypertony 
and also it will reduce the astigmatism and now i have done the optic capture optic capture helps in long term stability of the iol as well as keep the iol well centered i release the small bit of vitreous strand which i noted after putting the pilocarpine and that's the end of it this was immediate post op picture and uh, the three days post op picture you can see the cornea is very clear patient got 6 by 6 unaided vision so the things we learned from this video the posterior ledge sign very very important sign a new sign which i have discussed in this video and i think this will help you in very early recognition of the posterior capsular rupture and management making scleral tunnel important tips avoid hypotony take time avoid area of initial incision and make a large tunnel of at least 6.5 mm tips for doing nucleus prolapse never push the nucleus down avoid pushing ovd over the nucleus hook the nucleus under it push ovd from the deeper most part of the nucleus so that you can take the entire nucleus out while doing anti vitrectomy use diluted tramsulon bottle height of 60 to 70 cm cut rate highest vacuum of 150 to 200 and keep the anterior chamber always maintained for many such videos do subscribe to my youtube channel and you can also visit our website fakotraining.org.in thank you so much